Student experience. Student experience is a really large area, and you'll see there's many objectives. The decision was made that we didn't want to isolate either the academic or the student life. We wanted to integrate them with how we looked at them. So this deals with basically every component of a student's experience at MFA. So extend excellence in academic, service learning, and co-curricular athletic programs to provide a sustainable, individual, and holistic student experience. One, conduct an, conduct an assessment of curriculum standards and objectives across all grade levels. Use findings to inform and guide curriculum development and the creation of a cohesive, intentional curriculum document. Um, definitely one of the things we identified as a need was that we all should be able to say with complete confidence that we're speaking the same language, we know what an NFA education really looks like. And we know what the benchmarks and measures are going to be at every grade level. So this document, which uh, hopefully you all saw the exciting announcement over the weekend of our curriculum council, um, that council is going to support us in the administration in developing this document and really um, evaluating our curriculum for both a vertical and horizontal uh, construction. So that we're looking across grade levels at how all the different content areas interact, and we're looking at the incremental progress, what we want a first grade student, age student to learn, what we want a fourth grade student to learn, we want an eighth grade student to learn. So what does an, an, an exiting graduate look like and what skills have they obtained here? So that'll look like new documents shared with you um, that will continue to be assessed and developed so that you can be better equipped as parents, as most of you are parents, to really know what that education is supposed to look like and really know um, how you can best support the implementation of the curriculum. Cultivate quality teacher pedagogy and instruction based on current research and best practices. So making sure that if we're setting curriculum goals, then are we providing the appropriate supports that our teachers are the best informed and best equipped to provide the instruction and the level of instruction that we know what we want to challenge our students to their, to their highest potential. Evaluate and reinvigorate a dynamic and comprehensive service learning curriculum beginning at age three, so it is integrated with subject area content, engages all faculty, staff, is based on current best practices, and leverages SSJ partnerships. We felt it was so critical, this program, to how a student develops here at NFA, that it's included from two perspectives. We think one is how we as a school interact with our world. So that's part of our identity. But then also, what are the lessons that we want to form within our students? And I think a key part is how we reinforce that service learning throughout every content area, and everybody owns it. You know, it cannot be the service learning curriculum cannot belong to any one person. It has to belong to all of us. Maintain the excellence of, and influence of the Montessori program. Incorporate Montessori concepts of independence, concentration, self-esteem, and respect for all living things throughout NFA student experience. I think that says a lot. You know, we, we think it's beautiful that we have the two paths here, and we know that in fourth grade, both our paths come together. But I think there was something essential to the NFA spirit that attracted NFA to embrace Montessori, and we had the opportunity to make sure that we embrace that philosophy and that challenge for students <coughs> throughout the grades. Um, I think we very intentionally chose for the name of our plan, Direct It Toward Tomorrow, because we're looking to encourage and to create self-directed students, and we want to see how we can reinforce that across all grades. Explore student experience in the areas of athletics, co-curriculars, and the arts, and identify opportunities to improve and expand with the possibility of creating a position to lead these efforts. So we really want to see, we, we've heard throughout this process that we have opportunities to strengthen all of these programs and to involve the parent community, especially in how we redesign and support these programs. And we want to also look at how we're, how we're staffing and how, we're, how the staff best supports that. So I think throughout all these areas, we do want to continue to challenge ourselves to look at them differently and critically and making sure that we're giving them all the supports they need. We know that a rich curriculum and a rich education incorporates all these areas. Learning doesn't end in a classroom, it doesn't end at the end of the school day. Uh, for, for many kids, that may be when they're really just beginning to um, use their best skills and talents. And that is, a, I think, a key element here, that it is recognizing that all our students come with a unique set of skills and talents. And we have to provide the rich gamut of opportunities that are gonna meet the needs of every student. 
empower leaders to shape and implement discipline policies and procedures for all aspects of student experience. So again, so that we are holding everyone to that high standard that we want to, to model for our students in every area of school life. Develop and continuously assess the communications plan to streamline and improve user experience and invest in the technology platforms used for communications regarding all aspects of the student experience and effect. Um, that is critical. You know, we have the opportunity with so many technology tools and communication platforms. We want to make sure that we're intentional in what we roll out. Um, definitely our new website is you've only seen, you've only scratched the surface in what that website will be able to do and provide. Um, but we also want to look at other ways we can engage so that we have in-person opportunities like this that we have a, a podcast rolling out, that we have video elements. We're, we're videotaping tonight so we can make this available. Find out ways that we can use the latest ways to connect you to what we're doing here in the life of the school. So where we are so far. Um, so we have, um, as part of our middle states reaccreditation process, I did want to you know, so we make you know, this note, that this process of planning has been critical in that reaccreditation self-study. Um, and the faculty teams that have worked with the knowledge we produce in strategic planning have identified three objectives for growth, one being math and the math, math curriculum. Um, I think we all understand and can appreciate how sequential a math curriculum needs to be um, and how those skills do need to be built in a very, very intentional way and strengthened um, throughout that process, probably more than any other content area. Um, I would say, you know, Math is the most sequential, but I always say the writing is the hardest thing we ask kids to do. So all those things have to be done in a really challenging way. DEI, diversity, equity, inclusion, and how that is infused, and we have a, another goal area that primarily focuses on that area, and service learning. Um, articulation of high schools and performance assessments. So identifying measures, um, and so this will be a good example of how our council will look at measures we can look at periodically to inform the decisions that we're making. So um, formalizing, expanding that articulation we have with high schools. So last year we began the process with visits to the high schools and interviews with the administrators, the academic team and admissions teams at the main high school we send students and bridging, broadening out from that a little bit each year um, and formally requesting um, information on how the students perform on their placement tests. Where do they place and how do they succeed in those ability grouped classes like math and ILA and world language. So having that process every year so that we have that data. It's challenging because our kids go in so many different areas and so we can't get a good robust pool of data from all of them, but we have four that have been very cooperative and which a large cohort of our kids go to every year. So really using that data and collecting it formally so that we can make informed decisions. Um, formation of the curriculum council, which we already announced, partnering with, with Chestnut Hill College, to leverage that talent and resource here in NFA. Formation of a student life committee. Um, so the initial committee um, is being chaired by Amy Smith and Jamie Flaherty. And then the intention that it will also have three subcommittees, one for each of the areas, athletics, um, the arts, and uh, co-curriculars. In the next six months, you'll see the first rendition of our new curriculum guides being made available to you and explained to you. And we'll have an opportunity like this to, to talk it through. Um, expanded faculty mentorship and professional development program. So looking at how we mentor and onboard and support our teachers and do targeted growth plans for every teacher. Vertical and horizontal articulation. Uh, redefine grade clusters and strengthening, um, in particular, the middle school model. Um, so that one of the things we've had a lot of time in committee work this year is looking at um, how it's in traditionally sixth, seventh, and eighth grade articulating together. So we're looking at some plans to bring those, those grades together more intentionally and uh, strengthen the, the transition from elementary years into high school through the, that three years of middle school. So that as we look at our grade clusters school-wide, um, we have our houses for the early learners. Um, we have the two Montessori, Montessori path or the primary path up to fourth grade, have fourth and fifth grade articulate and collaborate more together, and then look at sixth and eighth grade as, as one whole unit. Um, where they transition to the high school experience. As part of that, we are looking to move the sixth grade up to the Norwood campus into the James Anthony Hall um, so that they can collaborate you know, in that larger building. Um, there's a lot of space in there and more than enough resources for them. And it's in many ways, you know, we are looking 
for some guidance from master planning about that, but it also opens up opportunities here for where the students uh, participate in instruction. The fourth grade area is, is you know, underserved as far as the, the space allowed for them, and there's a lot we can do with that space. So we can't go into all of that tonight because there's many more topics, so we will be announcing some other opportunities to learn more about that. And we have ongoing committee work with the faculty on curriculum changes, scheduling changes, um, but certainly that is one process that's coming um, down the pike. And then um, further down the line, you know, more formal partnership with CHC, uh, exploration of expanded programs for early childhood. So there's been considerations for, you know, can we take students at a younger age and deepen student engagement and challenge. So how we're, we're challenging students at every grade level.